Come on, Rangers! 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 Thursday training at Meadowbank. Five days on from the defeat at York, a game that, for the first time this season, has many of us wondering if the worst might actually happen. That Dorking, who have for so long looked up at the leagues above and never once at the ones below, might finally be relegated. And while Mark has the task of galvanising his troops for a run-in that will define their season, he's also got chairman things on his mind such as opening a new terrace and telling the people who have installed the new floodlights that the lights just aren't bright enough. So, honestly, in my head, Chris, all I'm thinking is, well, maybe it's so fucking bright down the middle that, that it makes make the other bit stand out. That's all I can say. I, I'll choose, like, let him be the judge. If he thinks, Mark, you're off your tits, it's fine, fine. If you go, Mark, see your point, we'll have another chat. But I think you might be right, maybe. Honestly. But only because you're fucking good at selling me. <laughs> uh, Big issue with Jason, Cookie and Seager, they're like stuck in a like massive, massive fucking problem like an hour away. So they, I mean, a lot of them had the problem, but I think they've got it even worse. They've just missed the cutoff. Just a brief outline. I'm gonna, just going to cover off the fact. I watched York today, um, second half. Um, really good performance. Really, really good performance. Definitely, um, I definitely ill-judged Macca. He was better than I thought. Most good things went through him. York game, so I'll cover the York game quickly and I'll just cover the fact that Maiden are going to be a full press. South End Tuesday are going to be a 3 5 2. I definitely think I'm going to be suspended for pretty much the whole season in about a game or two. So you are going to have to really up your games organisationally on the bench. I don't want to come away from what we know is absolutely tried and tested players that know how we play down here, that, you know, winning players, boys that when they get goals, they get free goals. You know, we've got to put loads of faith in that. I'll dial them up in the same car, aren't they? I'll phone Joe, it'll be the first phone call they've read. I got you right. You're not moved, if you're on loudspeaker with all the boys, they can hear you. Um, oh, okay, cool. Have you not moved an inch? Uh, we have, we're moving like two miles an hour, if that, every now and then. Uh, saying, how long is it saying off? 45 minutes. Okay. Keep moving, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Next junction's <laughs> Keep going, mate. Listen, I'm just gonna keep you on speak, put me on loud speaker with the boys, and just while I talk to the lads, yeah. I genuinely believe we can win nine games out of nine. So we're in a position where we are just absolutely fucking eyes down on what we're doing. On a match day, if I think you know he looks like he's been dug up, he he's quiet in the warm up. I'm just gonna change it. I'll just change it because we've got great players here that want to win every game of football. And I'm going to make sure I'm ruthless with picking the right side, whether it's the warm-up, whatever it might be. Our, what, what, we've, what we're going to do, the strategy for nine games is to give zero fucks, to play our 3-5-2 against everybody and give zero fucks. That's what we've always done. That's what we're going to do. I'd give them a two-goal head start Saturday and still back us on our money to score four fucking goals down here. All day, every fucking day. And we will hit that sort of form in the next nine games, I'm telling you, with a much more aggressive approach to what we fucking do. But the only caveat from you is, you have to turn up. You can't have a shit night the night before. You can't turn up having had a round of miss. You can't turn up not 100% switched on on what you've got to do. Because I don't want any fucking margins going against, I don't want any controllables going against us, right? Controllables have to go with us. All the things we control. Yeah? All right, boys, I'm so very confident that is the fucking plan. I want to hear good feedback later from you, okay? Cheers, boys. Where you at, lads? Where you at, Seeks? Last week's defeat to York City has left Dorking Wanderers in a precarious position. For the first time this season, there is a prevailing feeling around Meadowbank that the worst might actually happen, and Dorking, who have only ever looked up at the leagues above, might have to start glancing down at those below, for they could well be relegated for the first time in their 23-year history. The performance at York was such that, should they continue to play that way, Wanderers won't be able to fend off the team surrounding them at the lower echelon of the National League table. Enter Maidenhead, another part-time outfit making its way in the National League on a small budget. They've been clinging on to their National League status for the last six years, narrowly avoiding relegation during the curtailed 2020 season on goal difference alone. 
Maidenhead United predate Dorking Wanderers by nearly 130 years and they're doing remarkably for a part-time club given the competitiveness of the league. And while we a bunch of amateurs have no time for the angry little safety officer chap who doesn't respect stretchers, the Magpies are a likeable bunch, especially this chap. It would take a shockingly bad run of games and a surprisingly good run of form from the teams below for Maidenhead to find themselves pulled into the relegation dogfight which might mean they'll go into the match at Dorking with a little less intensity than their hosts. And while Mark knows what to expect from Maidenhead, as an attacking force at least, he believes that a strong start could put the visitors off their game. They'll, they'll play like 4-2-3-1. Um, That's the bottom line. They will definitely fucking boom it. They're a team you've really got to respect because they can beat anybody, but they literally get beat by anybody as well sort of team that you could make not fancy it really fucking quickly, big time, right? Their record when they've conceded first, they've lost something like 95% of all games. And in reverse, when they've got something to hold on to, they fucking low block it out on a 20% possession. They're, they're, so Alan Devonshire is a fucking, he knows how to get results and I respect him a lot in this league, the way he gets by in this division. So getting the first goal is gonna be important. Yeah, that's for sure. We can expect them to defend um, a lot. From our point of view, Dan, you, your distribution's been exceptional. But now, against, like against Barnett, what you've done brilliant is when it's there to play, fucking play and do it early. If you do that and look up, nothing's happening except the pitch is coming towards you and it's pressed. We have to compete to win this game of football. Yeah, you have to really compete against this mob. Okay? But this sets us up brilliantly for South End on Tuesday. Our home form is excellent. And we could concede one and score four against anybody at any point down here. We're very good down here, right? But we must bring the button that fucking competes first, second, third, fourth contact all over the fucking pitch. What I asked you for at York at the end of the game was, I said to you now, every fucking time we turn up, me, you, all of us turn up, you boys chosen today, we give every fucking yard we've got, every fucking ounce we've got, boys, every fucking thing we've got in the tank. That's mentally thinking about the role. That's talking to your mate about his role. That's you getting the tactics right. Yeah? Okay, we give everything we fucking got. Okay? Come on, let's go. Yeah, we had a disappointing away trip to York. Apart from that, just getting ready for today, really. But yeah, mate, so just, just getting ready for another game. I think they can't come quick enough games, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, if you could play all nine in nine days, I think you would. You want to get it done, you want to get the business done, do you know what I mean? So, that's where we are. They're really efficient for this division and um, you've got to tip your hat to that because they wouldn't have the biggest resources in this league by a, by a mile, do you know what I mean? Devonshire does a really good job and he knows how to set them up, mate, and uh, you'll see today that they're as likely to win a game as they are lose a game. That's the best way I could word it. They're just, uh, they're a team that gives everything, so we'll have to give everything in return. We did let Mark go after that question, and then we realised we did not grill him on what happened the previous week at York, particularly him getting sent off. The ban has not kicked in yet. So uh, we called him back and asked him, are you ever going to change? Yeah, it'll probably get fucking worse, to be honest, because they just fucked me off. That's the bottom line. I hate the, I hate it all really. I hate fourth officials. I hate the role of a fourth official. I hate the fucking hierarchy of a referee. I hate the way they deal with things emotionally the whole time. Um, so to be honest, I think if anything, I'm one step closer to another one. I think realistically, it's surviving in the National League because they're a part-time club in a predominantly full-time league. And we're just lucky to be in this league. Well, I'm not lucky. We work really hard to be in this league. But we're not like playing teams like going away to like Notts County and being grounds like that and like Wrexham and all. Massive clubs. They, they belong at the top. They, they've got a good fan base. They've got a lot of good, passionate support. It's just, it's a very transitional period at the moment. We're looking to build on our ground. We're looking to build a new stadium for ourselves. This is the highest level we've ever played at. To be honest, we're probably punching above our weight because we're still a part-time club. There's only two in the league, us and Wealdstone. Oh, and Dorking, okay, three. Um, so probably our natural level is probably one division below this. I think the club are doing really, really well. I think the manager's doing really, really well. 
for a part-time team to be in this league, like it's incredible. We've had a few good results. I mean, we we beat a strong inform Wrexham. We've um, we've been to a few away games like York. We beat them. We went three months, I think, without a home league game, and then we've played four Tuesday home games on the trot. And for a part-time club, four lots of Tuesday Saturdays can kind of take its toll. We don't have the best of funds at the moment. Like if we had funds like Wrexham, we could easily go up. Sometimes we have off days and we lose a couple of points that we should have won. But sometimes we get unexpected wins and draws, so yeah. Obviously staying in the league is the main aim. We want to stay in the league, but we want to go even further than that. We want to become a solid national league. So we want to be pushing up, we want to be competing with the best. I think our expectation we we'll probably get a draw, I would say because we seem to do badly against teams below us in the table. Right. We're the only club that's lost to Maidstone and Scunthorpe <laughs> and Gateshead. Right. We're too big, too strong. I think, yeah, a couple of goals to nil. Maybe three points or a point. We don't have the best away record, so, and Dorking have good fast starts, so I'm expecting a draw maybe at best. I mean, today and Tuesday, I'll be done for the season, yeah. Uh, do? I might do a mascot here, genuinely. I'm not even mucking about. Like a big chicken, I'm not even joking. Oh, <laughs> just, just sit in the corner like a big chicken. <laughs> Jimmy, I think everything you're doing when you play is literally almost spot on. I think the only tiny tweak I would have mm -hmm. is, is to just like, Get them on the outside a little bit earlier. Like I think on the outside you're fucking terrorised people. Mm. But equally, I love it when you go inside as well. But yeah. I think what I love really good about your platinum out when you drop in high and you take them touches. Right, the key, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. No, where's Dan? Dan? Okay, that's for Kay for now. Listen to me, yeah. The key to the game is making their keeper the only bloke that can kick it, all right? Long ball teams, if he spills it, we press it, if it's in his hands, we get in front of our bloke. We make the keeper have to kick brilliantly the whole time. Really key to this game, okay? They're gonna go long. The right winger is a fucking center half. So um, number six, it's a random one. So it'll be a target at a time, but not many keepers are good enough to aim for targets under pressure. They tend to just clear the fucking ball. You lot in front, do the second bits well. I know you will, Dan, okay? We're a team, when we're getting on the outside of teams, we're fucking unbelievable, right? That's when we're fucking unbelievable. It's a big old crowd here, mate, queuing around the block today, right, okay? So Seb and Jimmy, when you get your opportunities, one on one, get balls in the box. When balls go in the box, expect Josh to arrive with Jason at all times. If Macca gets it on the shelf anywhere, look in between your full back. Same with you, Jimmy, like you always do. Okay, right? Two, two early goals, I fancy, in this game, in the first half hour, kill this fucking mob off all day long. We've got way too much for this lot. But I'll say one thing, you can't wait. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. That's life. You don't get a second chance to be switched on, okay? You have to be really fucking switched on. Primarily win your fucking battles early bells. Primarily win your battles, okay? Help your teammates, tell them when to be tidy. Tell them to when just to take one touch instead of two, okay? Just keep the ball out of trouble, keep it fucking moving, we'll be fine. Dan, get us down around the edges. Okay, boys, let's go. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Okay, Let's fucking go, eh? Come on! Jimmy, you've got this fella's number all day long. All day long. Adam, all the best, mate. Cheers, mate. Dorking have spied that the Maidenhead left back can be got at, so we can expect the ball to head in Jimmy Mewitt's direction quite a bit this half. Well, they'll need to do better than that. So we got to keep an eye on Moro. 
Morrow and Josh have got 10 and 10 and 27. Out, Seb, Seb, Seb. Run him, run him! Get up, Cookie, get up, Cookie, get up, Toe! Set well done, up. boys, well done! Set it up, set it up, set it up, Joe, set it up, Joe! In response to their defeat at York, Mark is taking a slightly more pragmatic approach to his tactics. That means we're going to see Dorky mix up their play a little more than perhaps we're used to. With the team's average height going up by around a foot since the arrival of Craig, Pryor and Cook, that does mean more balls into the box. Set it up again! Stay, stay! Stay! Tone! 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 Stay! Stay! stay. More I'll organise! Maka! Maka! Come short! Maka! Sorry, mate. I fucking always take my eyes off this side. Morrow, make sure the edge is secure. Still, if they're going to keep the defenders up for Josh Taylor's long throws, they need to be locked up at the back. Oh, mate, where are we? Where's Macca gone? Fuck me! Charles Adams gives Rhys Smith and Sam Barrett a chance to break, but fortunately for Dorking, Luke Moore is filling in for whoever was missing from the rear guard. Who's doing the edge of the box, Macca, Macca. Macca, he went running off around the back. Definitely Macca. Have you look, double, double check it. Macca! Macca! You're on the edge! Throw in! Don't go! You gotta sit! Beardo's set piece tactics call for Macca to sit back on long throws, but Macca doesn't seem to be getting the message. From our long throw on the edge, you need to be on the air, you went running off. It seems unlikely that Mark will ever get along with officials, especially when they're more concerned with how many coaches are sitting down than potential penalty calls on the pitch. Handle! Fucking handle! Fucking game! It's not conclusive, but we've checked it a few times and we're convinced Zico Acer couldn't resist a little backhand tap down here. Mate, stop fucking on about this and watch the game. Yeah? Touch, touch. Fuck, what's the point in coming? Touch. Yeah, point in coming. Touch, just don't swear at him. If you wanted me to swear, I'll fucking do it. Hell, just mate. Don't you do it. You might as well work in the fucking cinema or something, mate. Right. Fucking hell. Yeah, just a bit more on the pitch, mate, if you don't mind. Is that alright? Because you could help us out, do you know what I'm saying? Dorking are mixing things up as they keep control of the ball while also being open to the idea of going long, where they'll pick up the pieces higher up the pitch. Jason! Chase! Trap! Set feet! Set feet! Don't fuck him out, Joe! Show! Dan! Don't slow it down! The centre mid! The centre mid's dropping on his toes! You do it early or fucking play! One or the other! Whoa, not too high! Oh. Pryor wins the ball from the corner, only to see it drop over the goal. Still, it's promising to see Dorking dominating in the air, especially as they're looking pretty strong at the back too. Too strong as far as the Maidenhead bench are concerned. Totally got the fucking ball. Put it out! Put it out! Put it out! Fair tackle though, mate, to be fair. It's a proper tackle, to be fair. Chase, loads of, loads of, in these pockets here, just holding it up makes a big difference because this is where they're definitely weak, just in front of their back four, yeah? Josh, really good. Oi, there's so many gaps. The ball on the deck in this third. So, hey, one pass into Jimmy or Seb changes the whole landscape. Try not to play too central or too direct. But we just want to break the first press. Jimmy's a good ball or Seb. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy's the best ball on the pitch at the moment, so Jimmy's an easy ball. It's pretty standard storytelling to set something up that's going to pay off later on. So we're really hoping that Jimmy Mewitt does something today, or else we're going to have to delete this entire right. subplot. Oh. Good boy. Right. Good, good, good boys, boys. Well good. Done. Cookie, well done. Down, well done. Great ball. Oh my days! Wanderers are throwing crosses around as if the crucifixion somehow got mixed up with the Highland Games. And like a religious person with no sense of humour listening to this joke, Maidenhead aren't dealing with it too well. Oh, mate, off the line. Oh, yeah. Chase, oh, what a chance. Off the line, isn't it? No chewing gum between us. Come on, Jimmy. We need you to justify your screen time here. 
Oh. Come on, Jim. Bit of magic. Go, Jace. Corner. Inside your cookie, cookie, look in front of you. The visitors don't seem to have any threat at all, and that means Dorking are piling on the pressure as they look for the opener. First time. Oh, he saved that. He fucking saved that. Perfection. He didn't say that, did he? Perfection. Save. Fucking hell. Every corner and cross seems to land on a Dorking head, especially the one that belongs to Jason Pryor. Oh, Jace. Unlucky. He's got first contact, Jace, three, four times now. Come in a minute. Good delivery's in. Nearly half an hour played and it's yet another corner. If we've done our editing job correctly, you're going to see this coming. He's won every single corner in both boxes. George Frankham's corner drops perfectly at the near post for Jason Pryor, who arrives like a single carriage locomotive, or at least just the engine with no carriages attached, to meet the ball as if it were someone who jumped in front of the train. It's always good when he gets an early goal chase, he gets two. Sounds like another setup to us, a plot setup. Yeah. He's won like, I think he's won every single, every single corner he's won. When he gets an early goal, Jace, he always gets two. We're really hammering this one home. Fucking Jace is about 18 foot tall. Right now, we need Pryor to get a second and for Jimmy to take left back or Deteo apart. It's a foul! Just outside. And Mark really wants some chewing gum. You got a chewing gum, mate, or not? No. Cookie, get across, mate. Jimmy, is that a good start? Get out, Jimmy. Good. Oh, fucking brilliant, Jimmy! Well done, Tony! New point, Jason! Mark in! Lincoln, good lad, go down. Good lad, good off. Did he get a yellow? No, no, no. no. Long ball teams get more and more dangerous as the game goes on because it's not a game that requires a lot of energy. I promise you, right? So this game is far from fucking done. Nil nil mentality. So good off, well done, but that's as much as we'll say about that. Every time we go backwards today, we are going to be pressed. Simple, simple. Seb, if you see us going backwards, okay, don't fall for that trick of then going equidistance backwards, right? And that's not your fault, but what happens, Seb, is all of a sudden we're even higher pressed. And also, you ain't an option anymore. This side, the game, by the way, every now and then there's certain things in games you do. The games is avoiding Joe on his wrong side. And we've done that. When you had that mix up, right? You're giving it to him under pressure. He's, he's on his wrong side, Dan. Fine margins. You lot should be saying, open out. This is not a go. Listen, to be fair, when we've played out on a sixpence, we've actually done it all right. But what you don't want to do at one nil up is give average teams simple opportunities, right? But don't, I've asked you last week, didn't I? Don't fucking switch off. Yeah, clean fucking sheet. Every situation you need to think about it, think about it. Don't switch off for a fucking second. And whatever you do, don't you dare lower your fucking standards. Don't lower your, you've won a lot of half battles here. The ref's having a fucking great game. He's not even, he's chilled out, the ref, right? Don't fucking switch off. Don't let, that winger will not stop running. Yeah? Okay, the keeper will keep going long. Keep him under pressure. Keep doing everything. Everything you're doing. Don't let one fucking thing slip. Okay? Come on. This is the end. The end of our elaborate plan to sell football kits. Or at least to get you to go to fcfootballkit.com for this is our last episode that they're sponsoring. So here we go. Green, black and white. Just not colours that we'd go for. 
So I guess what I'd say is, if you insist on having green, black and white as your kit, go to fcfootballkit.com because they'll turn that monstrosity of a combination of colours into something you'll be proud of. fcfootballkit.com. They make good kits. Jimmy, another 45 like that, come on. Yes, Jimmy, we've been setting this up all game. It's time to deliver. Go on, Jim, you'll get there. Full spin. Good, Joshy. Maka. Put it in there. <laughs> Great fucking, fucking start, start boys. Yeah, yeah. Good start. James McShane shows a flash of genius to allow Jimmy Mewitt the chance to fly down the right-hand side. He crosses to Jason Pryor, and the pair manage to pay off two storylines in one passage of play. George! George! Slow it down. Jimmy! Jimmy! And again! He was probably hoping for a well done there. Jimmy higher, Jimmy higher. Go on, Jim, go on, Jim. Jimmy! Jimmy is winning everything. Jim, just get off him, son, he's winning it all. Jim, he's literally winning it all. Seb Bowerman looks to get in on the action, but his shot is parried by goalkeeper Alexis Andre. A week on from the abject defeat in York, Dorking Swagger is returning. Their willingness to mix up the passing stuff, along with playing the percentages, is paying off, and Maidenhead have no response to the home side's dominance. Okay, they're 4 4 2 now, so they're going to lock on. So, believe it or not, the spare player is going to be in front of you now. <laughs> Dan! Long's fine! Dan! 3 0 up! I'll go long! Clearly jealous at all the attention we're giving the other winger, Jimmy Mewitt, Seb Bowerman has sprung to life. His low cross lands on the chiselled head of Josh Taylor, and we can only hope it hits him in the face, disfiguring him beyond recognition, so he can experience what life is like for the mere mortals of this world. With the game seemingly wrapped up, Mark sends on Aaron Cool, the signing from Slough Town, who is seen as the future of the Dorking midfield. Not content with a single assist, Bowerman wants to get onto the score sheet with a deft flick. He's deft, right? It's not deft. Deft flick. It's fucking, oh, fucking hell. That is a hell it's of a fun. fucking finish, that. By the way, the goal is a great game. Yeah. Saying, goal, shit. Goal, goal, Bass. Just organise everything in front of you. Organise the centre mid, organise across the line. Don't worry about it. It's 3-0. We're done here. Yeah, we'll check out on that, that's fine, fuck the rest. Club captain Barry Fuller is being sent on to see the game out. And who can you trust more to help Dorking keep a clean sheet than Barry Baz Fuller? Superb, Jace. Oh, a fucking different class, mate. Different class, son. That trick coming, innit? Yeah? Surely, very important you've got the game in front of you. I want your man in front of you. I don't want to... It's 3-0, it's just about seeing the game and not, not leaving any holes. Your man you're marking in front of you. After last week's incident with the officials, it's nice to have Mark keeping out of trouble this time out. But when the ref tells George Frank and he's not jogging fast enough, well, here we go. Fucking hell, ref! What the fuck is running already? What do you want him to fucking do? Get it out, man! Bowerman is still working at getting his goal, and Jimmy's doing his best to help. Fucking brilliant, Jimmy. Had a break there. Make sure we're right here, Baz. Organise. Oh, time. 
Chuẩn bị kiếm bên này chuẩn bị Nah, he fucking fell over. The away team have not launched too many counter attacks, and when they finally manage to, it's Barry Fuller who's keen to impress by diving into a perfectly reasonable tackle. Penalty. There's a penalty. That's come from Jimmy diving. He didn't even need to dive. Well, this this looks like a perfectly good challenge to us. Wins the ball, doesn't touch the man. Mm, looks fine. Charles Adams squeezes the ball past Dan Lincoln to give Maidenhead hope where surely it doesn't exist. Free kick! Oh, we'll have the free Technic kick. Foul, man. We'll have the free kick, it's no advantage. Get up, Josh, come on, mate. Is he all right? Put it out! Put it out! Our ball as well. Chill. How long, Dino? Three. What's the other scores? Gates had a free one up. Thought there would be. Fuck me, tell me Yovelant as well. No, nah, the rest are all losing. Talk here, Mason, drawing everyone else losing. Up to Oldham. Do we go up a place? No. I mean, it's three points. Obviously got a game in hand, have a couple of these. South End are losing, which is good. The thing is, you can't just expect it to be like, you can't expect to go up to sixth, can you? Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. Do you know? Prior of old, isn't it, today? Ah, oh, he's been fucking outstanding, hasn't he? Well done, lads, well done. We're there, boys, well done. Thanks, mate, pleasure, mate. Cheers, Dev. Cheers, boys. Hopefully see you next year. Cheers, boys. That's the best game I've ever seen you had. One mistake made in that game, guess what it was? Because you're honest. Do you know what it was? That's a, sorry, that's a yellow card when he brings it down into the box, first half. It has to be, it has to be, because he's, he's, he's in the penalty area. Well done. Well done, mate. I'm Kelly. I'm George. Baz. <sighs> right, let me be quick, yeah. Uh, well done, good stuff. Obviously, the, the way we are as a team, it's about being really strong at the back, and then it's about just getting the ball on the deck in those areas and then doing people damage. In honesty, the amount of last third action we've had in that game, like that, you know, on a better day of the week, you fucking, you can score seven, eight fucking goals, to be quite frank. It was men v boys in there half, to be quite honest with you. But well done. You right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, excellent performance. Well done, Jim. You know, but what I say is, I, I'm done with that game now. I'm writing that one. That's done with me. I'm fucking done with it. I ain't celebrating fucking shit, right? I'm fucking hurt to fuck. At fucking anybody who can beat us, right? It's gonna take me a fucking while. I honestly wanna win all nine games. I wanna win every fucking thing we touch. I wanna to approach every game like we're gonna win every ball. We're gonna do everything right, okay? Yeah, there's loads of great performances. I'm happy as fuck, well done. It's a good fucking home win, right? And now we literally, all we think about is doing the same to South End. They lost their sixth straight game today, right? They'll be on their fucking ass coming down here. We're gonna fucking try and beat them up, lads, okay? All right, boys, well done, okay? <laughs> But well done, we've got a win. Uh, trainer was well planned. Beardy, well done on planning the meticulous stuff about Maidenhead. Yeah, okay, which is great, yeah? It's, it's just a game. It is honestly just a fucking game of football. That is where it is. We know what we're capable of. We know all of that shit, okay? We know if we can defend teams. They were not the best team in this league today. That's for sure. I'm struggling to see one player that's good. But when you've got big, strong players um, that win their half battles, the opposition do give up a little bit. I thought that happened today. Dan. Tony, Cookie, won a lot of half battles and eventually they just get a little bit bored of being jabbed, you know? So it's really good. Um, obviously, South End have lost a few now, so we'll have a look. Lost you, six in a row now. Yeah, we'll have a look at, obviously, they normally play 3-5-2, but they definitely, 
loads. Yeah, the gaff would be, you know, but I just think we we know we're going to play 3 5 2. That's the good thing. We know what we're going to do. Louis, can you do your roll call tomorrow and see what's what? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, and we'll go from there, yeah? Well done, though. Good session, Thursday. Yeah, it's obviously on to the next one, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, um, you know, we know what we can do. Uh, really good today, really. Across the 90 minutes against the physical side. You're going to say routine any other day of the week, aren't you? But it's never routine when you haven't won. You know, Maidenhead always a strong side, so more than capable against anybody, really. Um, got to transfer our home form away from home. But, you know, we have produced a lot of good wins at Medibank in this first season in this league. So we are ticking a few boxes. There have been a lot of fucking clubs that have been put to the sword down here by us this year. Do you know what I mean? I sound chilled. Because I am, because you don't sleep when you fucking lose, Rich. I don't sleep. I don't. I think about it all week. Everybody around me, I fucking, I'm in a bad mood with. So for two days, I'm, well, I'm guaranteed, anyone around me now is guaranteed for three nights to, you know, be, be happy. Do you know what I mean? Because we ain't got another game until Tuesday. So we're going to dine out on this one. Do you know what I mean? If you want to help us grow, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed and tell your friends about us. That helps too. Um, you can also sign up to Patreon or you can wait because we're going to launch the YouTube memberships thing and you'll get loads of behind the scenes stuff. So we'll tell you about that soon.